Hi everyone, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are we all today? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make floating chain jewellery. So it's a very simple and easy process. Uh, let's just show you the sorts of things that we're going to be making today just uh, for you to see exactly what's going to be happening. And then I'll say hello to a few people and let them all know what's going on. So um, <clears throat> if we have a quick little look, I'm going to be making a, my plan today, I'm going to be making a graduated necklace, just like this one here, as well as the, let's see, a, a three strand bracelet, similar to this one here. I hope I've got a picture of it. Maybe I don't. No, I didn't put one on. Doesn't matter. But I'm going to be making a single strand bracelet, a double strand uh, bracelet and a graduate, no, triple strand bracelet and a graduated necklace. So these are the sorts of things that you can make these images with the crimpable chain to make beautiful floating jewelry. So that is today's plan. Uh, just in case you missed it last week, really quickly, I'll just tell you, we did our jazz tutorial. So for the people who missed Saturday's tutorial, if you want to check that one out, it's on the Bead Spider website. It's also on the um, Facebook page as well as on YouTube. You can access it in all of those different places. But let's see if I can just show you a quick picture of what it was. There we go. So I pretty much showed you all of the techniques. This was on Saturday's video, so you can go and watch that on demand now if you want to. I made uh, the pendant there at the very bottom. I made the pendant there in the middle as well. And I showed you how to do the edging so that you could make that lovely stacked necklace, uh, which comes in a full set <clears throat> like this, uh, which we have a kit, which again, you can you can find that one on our website. It's on sale at the minute still, uh, if you're wanting to get that. Um, and that makes the stack necklace pair. It also makes a bracelet and a pair of earrings as well, which there's uh, an example bracelet just there that you could be making. Um, lastly, what I will also be telling you is what's coming next week. So I'm just getting all the important stuff out of the way at the very beginning before uh, we begin the stream. So next week, uh, no, sorry, this Saturday, this Saturday, not next week, this Saturday, I will be doing some Kumihimo uh, jewelry, but with beads, because you can make really beautiful beaded Kumihimo pieces really quickly and easily. Um, <clears throat> so I will be showing you two different ways to do your beaded kumihimo. Um, one which will be on four strands and one which will be beads on all eight strands. So I'll just show you a little picture uh, to give you an example of the sorts of things that you can learn on Saturday's video that I'll be doing. So if you haven't done kumihimo before, it's a form of Japanese braiding. Um, this is an example of uh, on four strands, which we do have a kit for that one, which comes in lots of really lovely, beautiful colors, pearls and crystals you get in that one. And we also have, which is this an example of it here, you get on all eight strands, you put beads on. We have our kit, which is called the Holiday. The other one was called the Venus. So the one with the crystal is the Venus. And then this one here, which is really lovely and summery is called the Holiday Bracelet. So this is what I'm going to be teaching you on Saturday. So um, <clears throat> that's what's going to be coming up over the next uh, few days and what I've been doing. But as I've said, so today's plan I'm going to be making that crimpable jewellery. Um, so I've got myself my my wet ham. Let's flip that over, shall we? So we can actually see. Wait a minute. Here we go. Just pop that into the corner here and give it a flip. There we go. Now we can read it properly. Uh, yes, so how is everybody? I see lots of people have already joined in and are commenting and saying hello. So definitely we want lots of people coming in and uh, saying hi. Um, but yeah, the uh, let's have a little look-see. Um, so we've had already, as I said, quite a few people coming in. Uh, Evelyn, as always, she's a regular. She's um, 
here, so hello to Evelyn. We also have Lynn Lun Larson. She's been unwell. She had an operation, but hopefully you're feeling better, Lynn. Uh, thank you for joining us. We've got Jan as well. Uh, her jazz kit just arrived, so she'll be making that one. Um, Carolyn, her jazz kit as well. No, Jan's just finishing her jazz kit, and Carolyn's has just arrived. So welcome both of you on YouTube. Um, we have Jan Hughes on Facebook. We also have Sharon. Hello to you. And D, Monica, Stacy in Ohio. Thank you for joining, Stacy. Um, who else have we got? Carolyn in Northampton. We've got lots and lots of people joining today. Uh, Bernadette says she can't stay today, but she'll watch later. So just like Bernie, if you are unable to watch now, don't forget you will be able to access this video right now, <clears throat> um, it will be on demand and available later for you to watch then. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of people on. Maxine, my girlfriend, she's upstairs. She's watching. She says hello. Um, Elaine, Eliza in Michigan. Where, where else? Where's who's who's in somewhere really strange and interesting? Because I'm here in miserable, rainy Cheltenham today. Uh, whereabouts, uh, whereabouts are you? So if you're somewhere really interesting, I'd love to know. Um, so Pat has also said hello. Anyway, um, yes, as I said, I'm going to be making uh, that beautiful crimpable chain jewellery today. So the fantastic thing about crimpable chain, it really does make jewellery making quick and easy and really, really beautiful and effective very, very quickly. Um, it's using this snake chain type material, which I'll see if I can just quickly show you on the camera here. It'll definitely be easier for me to show you uh, in a minute once I've tilted the camera down at the screen. But um, let's just see if it will focus on that. Put that there. But yeah, hopefully you can see it's this sort of snake chain material that we're going to be using today. And because it's that really soft, lovely sort of supple material, you can see it comes out more, oh, maybe I should hold it a bit further back. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's sort of quite kink resistant, but it looks really, really lovely and effective and high quality when you're when you're wearing it. So there's that's sort of the chain there. It does come in gold and also in a silver color as well. Um, so that one was the silver, the gold I have just here. I am going to be using both today. And then the nice thing is you can pretty much use any assorted beads that you like uh, to create that beautiful um, sort of effect that you get from your, your crimpable chain. So if we have a look, for example, on this one here, I've used um, little hematite stars, and then something I'm going to be featuring as well today are the beautiful um, <clears throat> sort of stenciled peacock beads. Uh, hopefully Jermaine is watching and in the comments at the minute because I'll get her to put a link in the comments for you guys so that you can access um, our the different sorts of beads that I'll be using. I do have a link which is in the description uh, just up top. The pattern, the instructions are free. So if you want to grab the instructions, definitely hit the link that is in the description. So if you're on Facebook, it'll be up the top. If you're on YouTube, it'll be in the bottom. Um, but yeah, there's a link there that will take you to get the free pattern um, just uh, on our website. And then, well, the instructions gives you full instructions. And then on that same page, there's lots and lots of different bead varieties. So hopefully Jermaine can send me a link to um, one, our peacock beads, because they are really fantastic beads, and maybe a second link to our check bowls, because those are the main feature beads that I intend to be using today. Um, oh, we've got a lady from the Bronx in New York. That's a, a, a fun place to, to live. I'd love to. I've been there once before. I want to go back and visit again. 
Um, but yeah, everybody chat with each other. So while I'm demonstrating, it always makes for a bit more fun uh, if you if you all have a little chat together. In fact, do you know what? Do you know what? I think this will be quite fun. I was thinking I might do a bit of a giveaway today. Um, so if you like, comment in your favorite joke. So obviously it's got to be, um, you know, nothing too offensive, nothing too rude. Uh, give us your, your favorite, your best joke, and I will uh, maybe read some of them out a bit later on. But whichever joke that uh, makes me laugh most or whichever one I think is, is my favorite joke, uh, I'm going to give that person a £20 gift voucher to use on the Bead Spider website. So um, if you want to send us your jokes, I might read some of them out. And whichever one I like best, um, I'm going to send them a £20 gift voucher. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So uh, without further ado, shall we, I'll just show you some more little images of the jewellery. Quite a lot of people are commenting today, which is, which is great. I love it when you're all commenting. Don't forget, hit the share button and share this video so that um, right now, so that people will be able to view it with us all together and we can really get the, the conversation happening in the comments and we can have a good old chat and even people who are complete beginners, this video is perfect for them today because it's a really simple, fun, easy style of jewelry um, uh, <clears throat> uh, that anyone anyone can do. Um, oh, by the way, with your with your jokes that you put in, make sure you put the punchline as well, uh, because otherwise I I uh, I might miss them if they're not quite together. But yeah, we've got we've got one lady who's just put hers in. Stacy, what does a drummer name his twin daughters? Go on, ready, ready. I love this one. I do like this one. It's Anna one, Anna two. Okay, sorry. Maybe it should have been triplets. Who knows? Anna three as well. But yeah, I'll come back and I'll read some of the comments, and then after the show, I will uh, contact whoever I think will uh, is our winner because I might miss some that are really, really good and only see the ones that are at the end. So I'll choose someone and I'll let them know um, at the end of this show. And then for all of you who missed out, I will uh, show them on, uh, I'll let them know on Saturday. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the, the crimpable chain style jewelry, just once more, I'll just show you some of the pictures while I move my camera into position. Like I said, it is a really fantastic and easy, um, uh, easy little tutorial to get on with today. Crimpable chain is super simple. And the best part is if you've got just the findings, because we have a findings bundle available on the Bead Spider website. Again, it's from that link in the description. Um, you can quite easily just use any beads that you like. I do have lots of lovely beads that I will be using, um, which they're all in... Um, that little section at the top. Uh, but also, let me just pop a few more. Here we go. Let's just give myself a bit of space. So these are the sorts of beads. Wait for it. Here we go. These are the sorts of beads that I'm going to be using. So these ones here, uh, all of these ones here are beautiful stenciled uh, peacock beads, they're called. Um, I'm also going to be using what are called check bowls. So these are the two different ones. Hopefully Jermaine is going to send us a link to these two different product categories uh, on our website and I'll post them into the comments. I see lots of people are sending in their jokes. So don't forget, um, I, I will go through all the jokes that people have sent in uh, a bit later on. Um, but yeah, so I've also got some check bowl beads here, which they're a, a really beautiful reproduction from the Czech Republic. So they're sort of um, sort of based on 1800s sort of style of jewelry uh, just here at the bottom. So they've got this fantastic sort of crystal. I don't know if you can quite see it. I'm trying to get the light to shine through it so that it's really effective uh, so that you can see that. Hopefully I can get it into focus. Uh, it's not 
it's not behaving today. Oh well. Anyway, uh, they also have this beautiful sort of uh, metal fuming. Come on, I'll have to show you a bit later on. Um, but yeah, they're really lovely beads. Plus, I also have some three by four crystals that I'm going to use, and then uh, some staple beads, which are really easy uh, to use and to uh, to make. Are the um, so to work with are uh, four some four and three mil rounds in gold as well as ones in silver. Which where have I put my ones in silver? I'm gonna have to just grab myself some of those out in a minute. But anyway, your your three and four mil metal beads in silver are very very useful to use. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we let me just grab a few of those silver beads out so i'll have them and then i'll start showing you the process because like i've said this jewelry i've got it's so quick and easy to make that i will be able to make three different pieces of jewelry in the time uh, that i do this one little video and i don't think it will take me all that long either um, hi to Nina, who's just joined us. Hi, Nina. Uh, we've also got Carolyn, who's uh, she's got her jazz kit today. So she's making that while watching. Um, if you missed that, that was um, Saturday's video. So anyway, um, these little peacock stencil beads, you can see, again, all of our glass, we get them from the Czech Republic. Um, it's, uh, if you want, when it comes to glass beads, the Czech, uh, Czech beads, Czech glass beads are by far the best. If they don't say that they've come from the Czech Republic, odds are they've come to ch from China maybe, which the Chinese beads, they are okay, but when it, but the, the ones that made by the Czechs are just so, so, so much better quality. The clarity of the glass is beautiful. The interesting things that they do, like with um, like the stenciling on this, which the stenciling is done by hand, interestingly. Uh, you can see all of these sort of beautiful iridescence. Again, these are the sorts of interesting and creative things that the, the Czechs like to do with their beads. But um, it's all about quality. I mean... When it comes to jewellery making, definitely, I think quality is king. Because if you're going to spend the time making something, you want to use something that is going to last and look fantastic. So if you just sort of want to use your, your inexpensive beads, by all means, they're just as good. But for barely, I mean, these are not expensive. I think £2.50 for a little string or so, even less. Um, and you get really beautiful quality beads. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll just show you now the crimpable chain that we're going to be using that gives us this sort of floating jewellery effect. So um, I'll zoom in so that we can really see it nice and close. Here we go. So maybe let's put a bit more of it into the screen. So this is my crimpable chain like i said it's a snake chain that um is fantastic not just for crimping onto which is what is special about this chain is that it's a chain that you can crimp onto um, um but yeah that's uh, one of the sorts of things that we that, that, that you can do with it, but because it's so sort of soft and versatile, you can also use it for your your basic sort of stringing project. So you can see here, this is the gold color, and I also have a a lovely silver color as well. So whichever is your color toning, um, both of them work really really nicely. As I said, we've got the silver color, and I've got the gold color. So depending on your skin tone, I think gold is potentially more my sort of skin tone because I've got a sort of a relatively yellowy skin tone. Um, but yeah, we've uh, the silver is as great as well. I see lots of people are, are uh, sending in their jokes. Um, we've just had Hillary send one in. Why did the mushroom go to the party? Because he was a fun guy. Okay, I'm, uh, you know, I, I do love a good pun, but um, 
Yes, thank you for sending uh, sending in those jokes. Maxine, she's upstairs. She's just commented saying she loves those jokes. So don't forget, uh, if you're going to send in a joke, um, you'll go in the running for a twenty pound um, a twenty pound gift voucher um, that I'm going to be giving away to whichever joke I like best. Um, right. So. First things first, when it comes to making your crimpable chain, like I said, it is an extremely quick process to make this style of jewelry. So what you need to do, once you've got all of your findings out, I'll just put on screen the materials that I'm going to be using um, just there at the bottom so that you can see. I'm going to be using some uh, lobsters and uh, oh, I haven't got them in screen. There we go. I'm going to be using lobster clasps and jump rings. I'm going to be using collots. You might also know them as charlottes, these little things just here. Uh, I'll be using crimps and crimp covers, which here we go. Just pop them up there. There we go. I'm going to be using crimps and crimp covers as well. So there's the crimps and these are the little crimp covers. I'll tell you more about those later. And then, of course, I've got my crimpable chain and then just a whole variety of beads. So first thing I'm going to do, I'll make a single strand bracelet in the silver color just here. So here's my, my silver color just here. The first thing you need to do is figure out the length that you need it to be. So I'm going to make mine for Maxine, who uh, is watching. So I'm going to make my bracelet to her size. So I've got myself a little ruler just here, which thankfully it has both centimeters. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. It has both centimeters and it also has my inches on there as well. So in terms of, because being an Australian, I work more in uh, centimeters than, um, than inches. Uh, the, so what I need to do for Maxine's bracelet, because as I said, I'm more accustomed to using centimeters. Her bracelet is needing to be about 16 centimeters. So I need to measure out uh, till I've got 16 centimeter length for my total bracelet. So you do need to make sure you take into account the size of your clasp first and foremost. Don't forget that. It's a very, very important thing that you need to do. So this particular single strand, I'm going to be using a really interesting clasp that just is super clean, super neat, super effective, and best of all, super quick. So this one here, we can see it's about two centimeters long or approximately, if you work in inches, it's about one inch in length there. So there's your one inch. So I need to take that into account when um, uh, when I'm doing my 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 little measurements here. So because it's about an inch or two centimeters, I need to reduce that from my full length and make sure I cut myself a piece that's that little bit shorter. So in this case, 14 centimeters. If you work in inches, uh, it's probably about the six six inch mark I should think I think is probably about is about 16 centimeters is around about six inches so to remove that one inch I'll use around about five um, five inches worth of of material just here by the way Carolyn yesterday I wore something from five years ago and it actually fit so proud of myself it was a scarf but still, let's be positive. I like that one. Thank you, Carolyn, for, for sending in your joke. I like that one indeed. Um, so um, getting back to my measuring here. So this chain, it is extremely simple and easy to cut. So I'm going to measure myself a 14 centimeter length. So I'll just lay that. Wait, let's just measure it this way so that my tea is getting in the way. I should take a sip of it before I forget. I always do. Um, so uh, let's just bring this to here. Measure to the 14 centimeter mark, which if I just put a little mark with my fingers, 
against the ruler, it's, there we go. So there, 14 centimeters. You just come in with some, whoops, um, some cutters just here. So bring in your cutters. Thank you everyone for your jokes. I'm really enjoying them. They're, they're, they're making me chuckle as, I, as I'm doing my, uh, my tutorial here maybe it wasn't such a good idea because it's a uh, i'm getting i'm getting distracted this whole time anyway so i've got myself a 14 centimeter piece of length because maxine's wrist is 16 centimeters and then the clasp is about two centimeters or in inches it's about five five uh, inches that i've got there plus one inch for the clasp uh, on her there so uh, first thing I'll do, I'm going to attach just one side of this little crimpable clasp. Let's zoom in a tiny bit more, shall we? I can zoom out again when it comes to doing the bead work. But uh, first things first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add on just the one side of my clasp here. So as I said, this is such a simple and easy um, finding to use and it's such a clean and neat finish if you have a look there's like a little coil wait can I zoom even further how far will it let me go wow it lets me zoom in so far how handy there you go check that out how good's that so you can see just here there's a little coil in the center and if I rotate it it's flat on this side so you've got a flat side here and a flat side on the bottom and then the coil in the middle so what I'm going to do is just take the end of my crimpable chain and just press it into my clasp here. If I push it too far, you'll start to see it pokes out from that other end. So what I want to do is just get it nice and neatly into position so that it doesn't quite stick out, but it's right all the way in so that I'm getting the full mechanism doing the crimping process. So I'll just bring in my pliers now. And then what we want to do is, you know how there were two flat sides? Uh, here, I'll show you on the second, a second little piece just here. So see how there's a flat side there. I'm going to, this is the section that you squeeze with the pliers so that the flat sections compress this little coil. That way, the coil is extremely strong. So all you need to do, if you're working on the table, you'll find that life is so much easier to, uh, to get on with because you don't move the chain, you don't move the clasp, gravity is holding everything in place. So if you've got, um, you know, sort of less steady hands i tell you i've i definitely don't have steady hands you'll probably see how much the tool is moving just while i'm here imagine if i was trying to hold that in place it would never work so this definitely works best if it's on the table you just press and then with all your strength give that a nice tight squeeze oops i dropped a few beads just there doesn't matter but anyway there we go nice tight firm squeeze and then you'll see that little clasp now is beautifully firm tight and gives you a super clean super professional looking finish there so there's my little wait a second let's get it in screen there's my little finding there so look how clean and professional that looks wait till i zoom out you'll see how small and neat it is there you go. You barely even see it when I'm at full zoom here. Uh, so there you can see that adds on one side of my clasp. I'll add this to the other end once I'm finished. Obviously, I can't do it yet. I've got to add my beads first. So what I'm going to do with uh, Maxine's little bracelet here, I'm going to choose myself some beads that I would like to use. So I'll just show you those check bowl beads a little bit closer up now if I can. Uh, now that I've got them on the table, because I think they are absolutely stunning little beads and I want to use them to make a feature. I also have some stencil beads in purple as well. There's some options, but anyway, you can see just there, see how it's got that sort of metallic copper fuming at the top. So these are called check beads. We also have cathedral beads, which are on our website. Um, both of those, they are 
uh, available on the website, but definitely you should be able to find these using the link at the top of our website there. So um, if you if you head to the link in the description, you should be able to find these sorts of beads. So I'm not going to use these ones just yet. I'll use them a little bit later. I'm also going to use some three by four little crystal donuts here. Carolyn says beautiful beads. I agree. I think they're they're lovely. Um, so Kelly asks, is there a specific name for that type of clasp? Yes, it is called a crimpable clasp. If you head on to that link in the description, um, it's I think it's one of the very, very first products because uh, we don't include them in our little findings bundle. They come separately from the findings bundle. Uh, so I've put it right there so that you can't possibly miss it. Um, uh, so we have another question. Could you use sterling silver thin chain in this project? I, I'm not so sure because this this chain, it's very specific to have that sort of inner strength within it so that you can crimp it. If you're using a different style of chain, when you come to crimping your beads, you won't be able to, uh, it won't compress so well. This clasp though, will work for other styles of chain. So as long as it's a chain that will fit inside the little hole at the end, which is quite fine. I think it's only a couple of millimeters, the hole, um, one or two mil. If you have a, a chain that will fit inside there, you can use this clasp for that too. Anyway, let's progress. I'll add on some beads. I think I'd like to use some of these stencil beads. Uh, let's zoom out so that we get more of the effect happening. But yeah, see how they're different on both sides? Uh, it's because they're stenciled by hand, these uh, these little beads. See, look, that's a really nice one. I think I might just cut this little strand here. Um, so yeah, they're, they're called peacock beads, these ones that I'm currently using. Uh, let me just cut this little thread if I can. There we go. And I'll get myself off some beads. I really like this particular one. Ooh, is it going to come into focus for me? Wait. Come on now. Focus. There we go. Uh, so I like this bead and I like this bead. So I think I might use those two. And maybe because you can fiddle with your designs and play around with it however you like. I might use, let's see if I've got another one I really like. Uh, here we go. I might just, um, actually, this one's quite nice as well. So there you go. I'm going to use these three beads, plus I'm going to use some little silver beads on either side. So I think I'll just go something like this, this sort of a design for my bracelet. So the reason it's called floating jewelry is because it's kind of going to have these these sort of spaces in between where the beads will be that it look like the beads are almost floating in position, hence the name. So what I'll do, I need to, between every one of these gaps, I need to add in some little crimps. So I need one crimp here, one crimp here, one here, one here, one there and one there. So obviously you'll see it threads on relatively easily. If I just, first thing you need to do, so you need to do it in this order. Let's just zoom out a little so we can see it all nice and neatly there. Um, uh, here we go. So if I just go through there, here we go. So if we saw that, I've gone through my crimp. It's very important you don't forget the crimps because if you forget crimps, you got to undo it and start again. Uh, now, then I'll pick up one little four mil bead. I'll pass through. As you can see, because it's quite a firm chain, you don't need to use a needle either, which is very handy. You just thread them all on. It doesn't matter how they look too much, how loose it is. At this point, that's not the important part. Just thread them all on so that they're all on as a big jumble on there, but make sure you do them in a design uh, that you really like. So now this is important. Just here, I've got my crimp, my bead, uh, my four mil, 
This stents will be the four mil and a crimp. Now I need to add another crimp. So make sure you've got two crimps in there. It's extremely important that you remember you need a crimp that's going to be for this one and you're going to need a crimp that's going to be for this lot of beads. So I'll just thread those through as well. Should only take a minute. Um, yeah, don't forget, if you are watching, please do share this video because uh, I'd love for other people to to find my tutorials and and to enjoy them as well. So um, if you if you uh, would like to um, definitely give us a like or subscribe uh, to my videos. Um, and if you'd be so kind as to share it with any of the bead groups that you're on, for example, um, or, or just onto your own wall, or, or, or maybe tag a friend in the comments. That's always a good way. If you know someone who loves jewelry making, tag them in the comments. Um, uh, if this is the sort of thing that they might like. Because as I said, this is very easy beginner sort of techniques so that even if you've uh, if you've got a friend who who loves jewelry but they don't make it maybe tag them in because this might just inspire them to to have a go when they see how easy it is um, but yeah also definitely um, check out the link up the top which will send you to how to subscribe to get more notifications about the patterns that we do and the instructions that we make and then whenever i'm doing live tutorial videos there's those as well so definitely um subscribe to that link up in the description which will get you onto our email list so you can see i've got it all full here this is all we need bead wise but see how much longer extra all this thread is so the first thing i'll do i might as well get my ruler again and it's very very important to find the middle point of your bracelet and work outwards from there because you want to have a really nice level of symmetry about your piece of jewelry just to be extra sure so we can see my little clasp is here is my wait a second just see if i can if i zoom out hopefully we can see the whole thing there we go so what i'm going to do is find the point at which the center of my my piece of jewelry is so if this is the very beginning and just before our clasp is where it will end we need to take into account this is going to cover that little edge so i need to start from this point and measure try and keep it nice and tight and firm on there and then just measure along until we find approximately the center of my piece of jewelry here so get it nice and straight put my thing on the top there measure from here measure from there comes to about here and then what I'm going to do, I need to find the center between these two points. So if it's 13, that will make it six and a half in the middle. So that's my center point. This is where the central most feature bead needs to be when I crimp it into position. So if I keep my ruler here, let's just slide these beads out of the way. They're not important. And I want this one just here to be sitting at that point so see that just there that's uh that was wait let's get it nice and straight again remeasure remeasure always you know as they say measure twice and cut once in this case crimp once so just need to move it over a tiny touch more put that there put that in position two and now what i'm going to do is crimp these beads into position so i'll just zoom in if I can, here we go. So actually, I've got instruction photos. Here we go. So let's just have a look. This is essentially where I'm up to. I've got my beads in position at the center of my bracelet there. So it's very important that you've got that. And you can see either side, you've got a crimp on the left and a crimp on the right. Don't forget, by the way, keep posting your jokes. I want I want more jokes. We need more jokes. Uh, because as I said, my favorite joke is going to get that um, that discount code, that tw tw sorry, that 20 pound gift voucher. Um, so this is what I need to do first. I've got my beads in position. And then what I have to do is, oh, it doesn't quite show, um, see those little crimps on either edge. What I'm going to do is just bring in my 
pliers. Let's just put it into the bottom. Bring in my pliers. So my first crimp is just here. I'll just move that into position. I'm also going to be using crimp covers. So it's important to leave a tiny, tiny bit of space so it's not too firm in there because if it's too firm, it gets a bit stiff. So I'll leave a little bit of space for wiggle room. And then what I'm going to do is just use my pliers just here. I'll use these ones here actually. And I'm going to just come on in. I can pinch it just very gently so that I can move the crimp exactly where I want it. See how I can move it? And then once it's in position, I'll just go squish nice and firm in the one direction. Then I'll get this other crimp out of the way. We don't want that. Keeping my work right there in the center. I can push it kind of against that other crimp now. And then I'll just move this over and just very gently give that a nice strong squeeze in the center there. And now you can see if I just pick up my, my piece here, it doesn't move anymore. Wait. See that? They're locked in place now. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing on my other pieces as well. I might put my clasp, the other end of my clasp on here, just to make sure I don't lose anything. So what I'll do, just like before, put it down, get that in position, make sure I can see it sticking out the end. There we go. And then I'll just pull it back a tiny bit, just like so. And then I will come in with my pliers like I did before. I'll do this one right-handed, even though I'm a lefty, just for you right-handed people. You can see how much less steady I am. And then you just squeeze those flat sections really tight, nice and firm. Give it a good squeeze, just like that. I might even use my, my dominant hand again just to make sure it's super-duper tight. Looks like it should be fine, but oh no, no, here we go. Let's just squeeze it a little firmer. Here we go, there we go, and then just super strength squeeze. And there we go. Nice, strong, firm squeeze. Pick it up, give it a bit more squeezing in my hand now. There we go, nice and strong. And there, that's completed and finished. And now what I'm gonna do is just get these into position approximately where they're a sort of a nice sort of gap. So if I have a look, I'll use my ruler again just to make sure it's mm, perfectly in position. There we go. And then what I'll do is just like my, wait, I'll just show you in the instructions here. Wait, next photo, not that one. I'm going to measure a gap, which in this case, an inch is probably a good amount because that will probably give me, so a couple of centimeters or an inch, it gives me space on both sides. So you can see it's approximately, right, let's just shift it a little. An inch is pretty good amount in this particular case. So there's an inch, there's an inch. I'll have a space there and a space there. So just so that it's working on this one here, my clasp is here, my other one is there. I'll just get my crimps. Hi, good morning to Tina. Whoops, I just knocked my camera there. Sorry about that. Let's get that back in position. Uh, yeah, hi to Tina and Adriana. Thank you for joining in. Um, for those of you who've only just joined in, I'm making crimpable chain floating jewelry. So I'll just squeeze this little fella because he's in about the right position. Give that one a nice squeeze, nice and strong so it's crimped in place. Move everything up. And then again, get the other side and just with a little bit of space, it's important to leave a little bit of space and then crimp. There we go. And then we'll do the same on this side. So get our ruler out, measure it to find the central point, which in this case is around about, so if it's about six, it's almost six centimeters there. So around about this three centimeter mark, around about there, that should be the center. Oops. About there, that's about the center. So now if I bring in my little crimp just here, I'll give that a squeeze. There we go. Give this one a squeeze. There we go. And now you can see, a. if I zoom out really quick, here we are. And now I have one, 
ready to go finished bracelet. I mean, I spent time doing that, uh, which wasn't very much, and it already looks, you can see how quick and effective that comes together. Um, so now um, what I will do, I'll just show you really quickly how to, how I can really neaten this up. So if we have a quick look at my piece of jewelry, um, there we go, it's nicely in focus there. If you have a little look, see how there's this little squished flat fella just here. See that? What I'm going to do now is just put on top of that a what is called a crimp cover because it gives it a really clean, neat finish on there. So what I'll use, it's one of these little fellas. Whoops, let me just grab one. Here we go. I'll one of these little fellas just here. So see how it looks like a little horseshoe? What I'm going to do is just put that on over the top of um, over the top of that little crimp bead so that it will be covered as the name suggests so that it's hidden. So just here I'll just lift that up and then this is the handy thing about bead mats. If you can see just there, hopefully you can tell, but I've got it standing upright. Bead mats are great just because they help with getting things to sit upright. So that way I can just drop my little crimp inside of the mouth of that cover. I can push it in a little bit more once I've got my tool there, but the nice thing is the bead mat holds it nicely in place. And what I can do with it is just get it to sit so it's over the top of the entirety of that crimp cover there. Just like that there. See how it's now inside there? And what I'm going to do is just get this little fill, fella here. Wait a second. There we go. Now it's nicely inside. So if you can see, hopefully you can see it, but it's... The crimp is inside the little mouth of the horseshoe. So what I'll do is just I'll put it down. I'll get my pliers and you just very, very gently with your pliers, squeeze it into a nice little ball shape. So if you have a look just here at the top, it's almost closed. Oops, sorry, just out of screen there. It's g almost closed now see and then what i'm going to do is just bring in my plier sideways and just very gently very neatly very slowly work it into that round little ball shape and then you can see now if i just put it in position here it looks like a little bead so it completely hides that little crimp so that it's completely hidden inside there and it just looks like a tiny little bead, a little three millimeter bead. So these are fantastic when you're working with crimps because they hide this flat looking thing and turn them into beautiful looking little beads, it completely hides your work. We've just had Kelly come on and tell me a joke about tea and that's reminded me I need to have a sip of mine. So I think I'm going to Ah, how refreshing. So anyway, how is everybody finding the tutorial so far today? That essentially, once what I would need to do now is just go through and cover each of these little crimps with those crimp covers, and that will lock everything in place, and it's all done and dusted and ready to, um, to uh, continue on, and that will finish it. So essentially, all you have to do is put these covers on each crimp, and then you have one ready to wear finished piece of jewelry all good to go nice quick simple easy and it looks really effective you can if you've got a smaller wrist put the beads closer together so they're a bit more um sort of close uh, otherwise uh, you can space them or do whatever it is that you fancy i will just show you now i'll zoom out as far as it will go yeah that's as far as it goes I'm going to show you something very, very quickly on how to do 
a multiple strand piece. So I'm going to make much like this one here. See how that's two different lengths of crimpable chain? I'm going to make a piece just like that one, and I'm going to use a slightly different set of findings to work out exactly the size that I need for my particular design that I like. So as you can see, that is um, a two strand necklace, and I'm going to make myself a nice um, little uh, same sort of style, but this one I think I might do in the gold. So you know those gold, uh, those purpley beads I showed you just a minute ago? I've got them pre-threaded onto my crimpable chain just here. So again, what you need to do with this particular one, if we have a look at that necklace, first thing you do is measure from the back of your neck around to the front the first piece of your wire. So the, the, that short one is what we need to do first. So obviously you can use like a ruler or what I personally like to do is to get yourself a nice single piece just there and lay it against your neck so that you go, yeah, this is about where I want it to sit. So obviously you want to take into account um, the length of someone's necklace so that it will be sort of in the right position for where it feels comfortable for you or for them, however it is that you want to do it. Um, do you know, I might take a quick break and read some of the jokes that people have sent in, because don't forget, if you want to send, you can win a £20 gift voucher if you want to send me in a, a little picture, uh, sorry, if you want to send me in a joke, just type me in a joke and, um, and the punchline and Whichever joke I like best, I'm going to do a um, I'm going to give 20 a 20 pound gift voucher to. Um, here's here's a good joke. I like this one. What do you call a sheep with no legs? A cloud. Da -da 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 -da. Actually, do you know what? That reminds me of a joke that I know. Uh, what do you call a cow with two legs shorter than the other? Lean beef. Da, 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 da. Oh dear, this is these these jokes are terrible. Um, but yeah, that one also leads on to another one. What do you call a cow with no legs at all? Ground beef. <laughs> terrible jokes. I know, I know. I apologise. But anyway, send in your jokes, and whichever one I like best, you're going to get a twenty pound gift voucher. So anyway. Back to the tutorial now. Um, hi to Lena, by the way. Thanks for joining. Where are you from, Lena? Um, so what I've done, I've measured out my two pieces of chain just here. I'll just find the ends of them so that we can show you the difference. Because obviously, much like in the necklace, you need one that's short and one that's long. So it's important that they're a couple of inches apart from each other. So. I'll just line up my two pieces just here that are, I know they're pre-threaded, but I'll just line them up and then we'll see the difference, oops, sorry, difference in size between them because to get that graduated effect, you need to have a difference in size. So you can see one ends here and then another one has all this extra length on it just there. I might have a little bit too much, which I can play with it at the end just before I finish. But what I'm going to do is just have a little look just there and you can see one ends here and then the other one, it's got about two or three inches extra and that gives you that extra little graduation in sh shape and size. So what's really a really great way of going about how to make this particular thing. By the way, if you want the instructions for this, the pattern is for free on our website. So jump onto the link at the top of the description and you can get the free pattern from the instructions up there in the, in the description. Uh, so if you're on YouTube, I think it might be below, but if you're on Facebook, it's up above. Um, but there's also a link to join our newsletter on there as well. So I'll just put that at the bottom. Um, it gives you a bit of information. So hopefully you'll read that at the bottom. And then if you feel like subscribing, um, that's in the link up the top there. So anyway, you can see the two pieces. What I'm going to do 
which I think is useful, is if you thread on all of your beads like I have done in advance, we can then do our little clasp MD bits and then work on the sort of the design of my, my final piece at the end. So I can just leave the beads on there for now and I'm going to make my two little clasp sections. Now this time I'm going to use a slightly different finding on there. So um, hi to Camille. Thanks for just joining in as well, by the way. Um, hopefully you're you're enjoying the jokes that are up in the comments. Uh, there's lots and lots of jokes that, that everybody's sending in because the best joke is going to win a 20 pound gift voucher. Um, so I'm going to add a different type of class here at the top of this one here. So I'll just zoom back in and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to use what is called a calot. These little fellas here, it's like two little cups at either end. And then at the end of the cup, there's a nice little loop shape that I can attach my findings to. So what I need to do essentially is attach that to the end of my little piece just here. So first thing we do is see how it's got a little hole at the bottom here. I need to thread my crimpable chain straight through that gap and onto my chain. Next thing I'm going to do is take some crimps because I need one little crimp here and I'll just thread on one crimp at the very, very end there. So that just comes in nice and neatly just there onto my thread. So I'll just get the beads out of the way a little. And what I'm going to do is just bring that crimp real close to the very end. So it's not quite at the end, but almost. Let's zoom in a bit more. There we go. Focused. Yep. So you can see my crimp is now right at the very, very end of my piece just there. So what I'm going to do is just bring in my pliers and give that a little squeeze. There we go. And there we go. That is going to secure the end of my piece just here. Now, the reason this works, because this little crimp now is a little bit too big, it sort of stops the calotte from sliding off the end of my jewelry. So if I just show you in a diagram form, um, wait, let's see if I can just show it to you here. So there's what I've just done. And now I'm going to close my little calotte up. So I slid the, um, the little calotte piece all the way to the end now. See like that? And what I need to do is just fold it over. You can do this with a tool. You can do it with your fingers, either one. I'm going to do it with my fingers just now because it is quite easy. You just get your fingers and then just squeeze it down so that the end of your chain is inside that little piece just there and um, closes it so that the two loops join together. So here's that big diagram of it and here's mine. So it looks like I've done it exactly right. And now if you see just here, that gap is the exact size that you need for a jump ring. Any standard jump ring should fit nice and neatly through there. So I've finished with this one side. I'll do exactly the same on the other chain now, on the other, the other piece of chain for this same side so that I can sort of just complete this off. Because if you do this in the beginning, it helps you to get that sizing just right, just where you want it to hang. So again, I'll just pop a little crimp, oh no, sorry, I'll pop a little calotte on first, pop that on just there, through just here. So slide it down, I need that out the way. Put my little crimp onto the end. So, oh, sorry, one second. There we go, there's the, the what I'm doing. So I've got my, my little calotte on there and I've got my little piece on there too. I'll just pop that on in there like that. Like so. Um, and hopefully everything should be ready to pinch into position. So if I just 
bring in my pliers, bring it nice and close to the very, very end, and then just squeeze nice and tight. Squeeze nice and tight. Give it a second squeeze just to be sure. Then I will slide down my calotte, and I'm just going to close it over. So just like in the picture in the corner there, fold it down with my fingers. That is probably firm enough to get it nice and tight, but if you want to see how it's a little bit separated, you can just bring in your tool and squeeze it together. There we go. And now that's beautifully neat, beautifully firm. And because these are both for the same end, see how I've got two pieces now? These are both gonna be for the same end of my piece of jewelry. So what I'll do is get myself a jump ring. Let's get this picture out of the way, shall we? Actually, what's the next step look like? Yes, so there we go. I need to now attach my two findings pieces to the end. So I'm gonna just do the one side. I'm gonna just do the one that's at the top first. Um, what I'll do, because I'm doing a multiple strand one, sorry about that, a multiple strand one, I'll just, I'll use my fingers. You, you can use pliers or whatever it is that you want. Open up your jump ring and put both little loops. See how easily they go on there? Straight on. Same with the other, straight on, and then just close that up nice and firm like that. And that gets it perfectly in position, ready to, that pretty much completes one side of the piece of um, jewelry there. So if I just zoom out really quickly, hopefully it'll come out. Here we go. Um, where are we now? Here we go. And now you can see, I'll just find my two other ends so I don't lose them. It's very important that you keep them together so they don't get lost. Keep those together. And you can see the startings of my necklace. Uh, here we go. There we go. And there's the one side of my necklace all done and dusted and at different lengths. So you can see they attach really simply to that little piece just there. So the beads, it doesn't matter. You can deal with them at the end. Ooh, I've got lightning and thunder here. Um, how's, how's the weather, by the way, where you are? So if I have a little look, now that I've got one side completed, if I pinch these two pieces together on in this other hand, so I've got both pieces just here, pinching them together, it gives me a good opportunity to pick up my piece of jewelry. So I'll just take it out of screen because what I'm doing is holding it up so that I can check out the length to make sure it's going to be a sort of a good graduation. So if I just lay it down, I get this sort of shape happening. So if you like there to be a nice, big gap. It's important that you give yourself lots of extra thread, but knowing Maxine's style a little bit, what I'm going to do, it's really useful to do this now because I can just check it out and go, do you know what? I think I'd like the two pieces to be together, to be a little bit closer, so I can just lay it out and go, yeah, I think this is a bit, a bit closer to where I'd like it to be. So this will fit, hopefully, a little bit um, neater, a little bit cleaner, just that little bit closer together. So I'm going to, now that I've compared the two pieces together, to get this sort of a size, I need to cut that extra little bit of length off. So you can see there's two pieces. That's how much I need to get rid of to make that second length. So if you got your length perfect at the beginning, well done to you, that's fantastic. But mine I made a little bit too long. They didn't quite match the way I wanted them to. So I'll just cut that little section off. Now, definitely don't throw these bits away because they're fantastic for making little tassely pendant bits or earring little pieces for earrings as well. Because all you've got to do is put a little crimp on the very, very bottom and then you can just hang your beads and they make beautiful little earrings. So you can do three or four little pieces um, all at the bottom there. So definitely um, it's very, very important that if you... Um, have that uh, those little offcuts don't throw them away 
keep them. Carolyn said, it's sunny in Devon. It's sunny where Tina is too. Camille's also got thunder just like me. So, uh, you know, um, all sorts of different weather everywhere, isn't it? But yeah, that's uh, it's not so pleasant here. And unfortunately, as always, I just had a pick up. I went to pick up my tea to have a sip. And lo and behold, it's cold. Oh, well, doesn't matter. So now that I've got these two in the right sort of length as well, I might as well finish them off and then I can focus on my beads and I don't need to worry about this little clasp section. So if I just grab myself two little crimps and two little collots, there we go. That's everything I need for that. And then lastly, I just need to grab myself one more little gold jump ring. Where have I put that? One second. Let me just find that. Da, 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 da. Where are you hiding, my little jump ring friend? Here we go. So don't forget, if you, if you want to make your own um, little beaded jewellery, you can easily go and... Uh, get all of these different products that I'm using today from the Bead Spider website. The link's up there in the description. So definitely go and check them out because I've got some of these little beads. Quite a lot of people say they're loving these long stencil beads. Other people have said that they, they quite like these. I personally think that these little crystal 3x4s are beautiful as well. So definitely don't forget to um, check those out. Um, but yeah, so now what I'm going to do is just crimp on these little end bits. But while I do that, should we have a little chat? I've uh, I've been growing some mint. I'll see if I've got a picture. I'm pretty sure I've got one. I'll see if I can find that for you. Um, just, here we go. Let me just give you the image. Uh, yeah, I've been growing some mint. It was growing in my backyard really beautifully, uh, but unfortunately... Because it was getting a bit wild, I had to um, sort of go and pull it out of my garden bed. Uh, so I've repotted some of it because otherwise it just kind of grows a bit too hairy, scary, crazy. Here we go. Here's a photo of my mint um, just here. Uh, I'll just get it into screen for you. Wait for it. And here we go. So yeah, I've been, uh, there's lots of mint growing, but you can see half of it is uh, sort of growing okay. The other half not growing so well. Um, I, I, I tried to repot it, but it seems only one of the, the two pieces has decided it wants to survive. Oh, and my, my uh, because this is all my, my first bits of gardening I've ever done, um, my, my um, strawberries are going really lovely. And we ate the very first one that grew because the, well, not the first one, the first one got munched on by an insect. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to eat that one. He had a big hole out of the middle of it. So my very first strawberry, unfortunately, had to go in the bin. But um, this the next strawberry, uh, because we got a little net to cover them all, is there's, there's lots of little strawberries all got... Um, growing yummy lovely little strawberries and I'm uh, hoping that that I'll be able to start eating them all up nice and soon so what what have you guys been doing to keep yourselves entertained because don't forget as I usually do I'm uh, hopefully um, going to be featuring your jewelry at uh, at the end of today's show, I'll show a couple. Um, and also, I definitely like to do it on Saturday. So if you send your videos, uh, your pictures of, it doesn't have to be just of jewellery. It can be. But if you want to send some pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk, um, I will try and get your pictures featured. So um, we've got quite a few people who've sent in things, which I'll show them towards the end of the show, some of the jewellery that people have been making. If you want to send us your picture and tell us where you are, what you're from, what you've been doing, all of these things, we'll try and get you into our stream for the end of this stream 
uh, all on Saturday. So that is the plan for um, the end of this show. But definitely, definitely send us your pictures and let us know what you've been doing. So um, we've got uh jenny she's asked did the cat pee on the pot perhaps well i don't think so but you know the this morning he's been he's been very naughty pebbles uh the black cat he uh i'm his his favorite person in the world because they're they're maxine's cats uh that she's had since she was uh, a child and pebbles he's he's taken quite a shine to me and he doesn't tend to like people very much but he likes sitting on my lap so you can see i've just um finished these two little pieces just here i'm going to add on my lobster to do that second piece but yeah pebbles he he's uh he's a a little bit annoying in the morning so he doesn't pee on the um on the uh on the plants but what he definitely does do is meow at five in the morning when he wants to go outside so every day at 5 a.m it's you know meow 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 at the door until you finally let pebbles out so um you know i'm a little bit tired today because mr pebbles decided that he was going to wake me up uh, at 5 a.m this morning but anyway you can just see i'm just adding on now finishing off my my second little piece just here Uh, the other end of my clasp and I'm going to put on this one as well the other lobster clasp piece so you can see I've just put on there two little collots oh sorry no you can't see Uh, there we go two little collots and also the um, the little I think I knocked my my camera a little Uh, yeah two little collots and one little lobster so I'll just close that off and readjust my camera because I think I knocked it put that back into position and you can see now I've got my two ends and my necklace is the is the right size just there so these are the two ends of my my piece just here and then I can just open them up and join them together and that sort of finishes your your uh necklace all you need do now wait if i just hold it up is position wait let's zoom out position my beads exactly how i want them so if i just wait a second let's just rotate up a little there we go now we can see a bit better um jan two aerials got married married the wedding was rubbish but the reception was brilliant thanks for that joke jan i enjoyed that one don't forget everybody who's watching if you want to comment in a joke um whoever sends me the best joke whichever one i like best uh we're going to give them a 20 pound gift voucher so I'll just finish this little piece off and then that ought to do for the sort of jewelry that we're doing. If you wanted to make something, by the way, that's two strand, three strand, four strand, you just make as many strands as you want. If you're doing a bracelet piece, you want to keep them all the same length. If you're doing a graduated necklace, you need them to be different. But you literally just attach as many as you want onto that little jump ring at the end. So this one, because it's a graduated necklace, I've got two. If you wanted three strands, four strands, however long, um, you just do it uh, as many as you want on there and that will create your beautiful, whoops, graduated necklace. Maxine, who I'm making this jewelry for, uh, the, my my lovely lady upstairs, uh, is has just commented in and saying it looks great so far on facebook so i'm glad she's liking it but anyway what i'm going to do i've got them she she pretty much aligned everything so what i've done i've put on this middle one here an odd number and then i've put on the bottom one the longer one an even number that way when i line up the little individual parts so like that little bracelet that i made which i appear to have put down somewhere so see how they're all spaced out into gaps like this because we're doing the same thing before i want it so that this one here 
ha is going to be in the center. So if we have a look at that picture um, of the necklace, see how you've got one in the center of the top one, but then there's almost like one in each of the gaps on the lower necklace piece. So I'm going to try and replicate that same sort of design on this necklace. So if we just have a look here, what I'm gonna do is, this one is my central bead because I really like these beautiful bowl beads. Um, I am going to make this the center of the top strand. So if I move these out the way, move these out the way, I've already put on all of my, my little beads as I want them. I've definitely remembered all the crimps, or Maxine has, shall we say, because she threaded it. Um, and now if I just disconnect this, I'll put it all the way nice and straight. So you'll see the, the bottom one is definitely longer. There's the straightened out length of my top one, and I need to find the middle point for this piece just here. So if I just move these other beads out the way, move these beads out the way, I don't need more crimps, there we go. And then all I've got to do is just pop these right in the middle. So again, I'll find my ruler and then I'll measure my design and find that central point because it's very important that you try and get it exactly where the middle is. So if that's the 30 centimeter mark, the total length is, there we go. So that total length of that top strand is 32 and a half centimeters. So obviously if you want to measure that in half, that's, um, sorry, 30, yeah, 32 and a half. So either you can just do the maths, which works out at 16 and a quarter, or if you prefer, you can always use a calculator. I am working in centimeters. You can do the same in um, inches. But yeah, so in this particular one, I need it to be the center of the piece will be around about here. So that is where I'll just make sure that my measurements were correct. Oh no, 42. Ah, I was almost out by quite a bit. So 30, yes, 42 and a half. So I need to do 21 and a quarter. So if I just measure along, where's the 21 and a quarter centimeter mark? So here, 21 and a quarter. So that brings the middle of this bead needs to be right here. So there we go. That's where this bead needs to be. So if I just use my fingers to pin this down, nothing's going to move. I can bring these beads up. You only have to do one side at a time. It doesn't matter about the other side so much, but I'll just bring that there, keep this bead in position, and then with my pliers, I'll just squeeze one side into position. So there we go. That's that one crimped in place. Get the next one crimped in place. There we go. And then, as you can see, you can almost press against that other little crimp cover there. Give myself a little extra space, so I'll move away from it again. Let's zoom in a bit more, shall we? Here we go. There we go. So you can see I can press it against that crimp if I want to, and then just move away, give it a little space so it can move, but also so that there's space for my crimp cover, because the crimp covers definitely give it a really clean finish. Um, so there's that one there in the center. That's my central piece. Then I have two more that are going to go either side of that central one. So if we have a look, I've got these two just here and this two section here and then one more so if we have a look at the at the full piece i haven't put too much up on the sides at the neck because you don't really need the beads up there you want to focus them in the middle plus then they don't get caught on anything or anything like that uh, also you'll see in that particular design i have only used one bead here one bead there you don't have to do what i'm doing where i'm using multiple little groups you can just do a single bead even it looks great um, and you don't have to use crimp covers. You just use really small crimps, like 2.2 uh, mil crimps or 1.5s. Uh, they work really well 
as well for um, trying to hide your your work and you just have sort of a spacing of just one bead. So anyway, um, I'll just come back in. Again, it's important to use your little ruler uh, just to get everything nice and accurate. So if I just bring this one side over, we can almost pretend that this little piece here is just one side of my, my piece of jewelry now. So this section, which is going to be all from the clasp here until where my my uh, little piece, and if I just move it in, you'll see it when it's not straight. So this is the center of my necklace, and this is the clasp. I don't need to worry so much about beads up here because, like I showed you, they're just up on the neck. So they don't necessarily need to be up there too much. So I think I'll give them a little bit more spacing than I have been. If I put it out straight, I'll just measure the gap. It turns out to be about 20 and a half centimeters uh, just there, which is in inches, about eight inches worth, a little bit over eight inches from, from one side to the other. So what I will do, I think is put one little set of beads around about here maybe I mean it doesn't matter too much you can you can do it entirely to your preference so I might make it a gap of maybe one and a half inches shall we say put the beads to there and then we'll say because now my beads are ending in about there I'll go one and a half inches from there which will bring me to here and I think that's where I'll thread these beads to so just keeping my edges nicely in position I will keep my ruler there just so that I can double check everything and then just measure this bring in my pliers and then at that one and a half inch gap so let's just find it get a measure one and a half inches there it is there and then just wait let's zoom in so we can see a bit more there we go see that one and a half inch gap there there's the one and a half inch mark just get it in position and squeeze right there just like that and now when i put it straight you can see my gap is pretty much exactly one and a half inches not quite accurate but it doesn't matter too much um slide those beads against it and then crimp the other side just here where am i oh, i crimped the wrong one <laughs> aren't i silly i need to crimp this one too so there's my gap there get it nicely in the center use your ruler to make sure everything is in position i'll use the centimeters this time so that we can see so i need it to be around about here and we'll just give that a little squeeze just get it in position pop that about there nicely there and then the same here butt it up a bit squeeze move over here and do my last little crimp slide it down and squeeze there we go so that's one side of that piece done and then I just do exactly the same to measure so it's important that you try and keep your spacing the same so if I have a look at the first gap before it works out at around about four centimeters so again I will want to be about four centimeters from the crimp put that there you can't quite see what I'm doing let's move it up a bit there we go so from here four centimeters grab my crimp and squeeze and then how big was the second gap second gap just short of four centimeters about four centimeters again so i'll do that again let's get this bead into position like here press that against that crimp we've just done oops Press that there and then squeeze this, measure four centimeters, find the crimp 
and at four centimeters well i'm just out of screen sorry about that let's just move it over there we go and then just go squeeze there we are four centimeters slide it down and just with my crimp bring that into position where's he gone here we are bring it down 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 and then there's my final little crimp bead just give that a squeeze in perfect now again that's all ready for my crimp cover so i'll just do one crimp cover to show you uh, that and then essentially we would just do exactly the same process with my spacing at the bottom but like i said i've got an odd an odd number for the top and an even number for the bottom so that my spacing wait a second let me just lay it out there's right let's just unzoom there's my two strands let's just try and get it neat it's definitely better if you've got a better cleaner working space than what i'm currently using but yeah just lay that out get the beads in position so that everything sits nice and neatly and slide there we go and then see how i've got these gaps i essentially want these to fit in these four centimeter gaps that i made so if we look at these i've got this is one little set of beads between crimps here's a second i've got six little gaps so number one and number two will be in this gap three and four will be out here and then five and six will be up closer to this pair of beads so this bead and this bead the final ones here my my uh my other gaps that's where everything is planning to come together so i'll just do one little set so that it's pretty much nice and perfectly in position just so that you get the idea and then i'll do a crimp cover to finish off so if i have a little look i can get this one straight and I'll pull this one relatively straight as well. And I want to fill these two gaps, which um, uh, if I just separate everything out, let's gonna have one little set of beads, let's slide them all the way down, 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 out the way, out the way, here we go. So I've got three sets on this side and three sets over here. So I need this little one here is going to be in this gap there we go so that's around about there and then this one is going to fit just here so they're all a bit different from one another because that's a nice sort of thing that you can do about these you make them free form you change them do whatever it is that you want to do so that they uh, it's, it's exactly at the at the sort of design that you like so you can see if i have a four if i find the center of my thread i can do two centimeters this way and two centimeters that way and that will hopefully give me somewhere in the center of this sort of section so where's my ruler let's just measure out the length just here get it nice and straight if i can stretch it stretch it stretch it so that it's as long as it can be here we go and then find the middle which equates to measure one side and measure there here we go so great i've got it almost in position so the center of it is just about there so just here is the center so if i put my ruler there i want to make a four centimeter gap so i'll have two centimeters this way two centimeters this way so this is where one of these little gaps will be so i'll just bring in my pliers here slide hold this in place so the thread the chain's not going to move slide it into position and give that a squeeze might as well get my other side here slide that to the center and squeeze and then this one here 
There's a little crimp just here. I'm going to squeeze that in position at the equal distance from the center. Move these beads into position and squeeze this one here. There we go. And now when I bring it all up and hold it in position, hopefully we'll find that it's going to sit beautifully Wait, if I can get it to sit like so. Look at that. So my, my necklace is going to sit really neatly just like this here. So see how I've got that nice spacing gap? So there we go. Look at that. Isn't that coming together really, really nicely now? So we just continue with that process outwards until it's all finished. So last thing I'll do just to finish off, I'll show you how to do one more of those little crimp covers in case you miss that little section at the beginning. Uh, where's my crimp cover? Here he is. I'll grab a crimp cover and I'll just pop one on one of these little crimps just here. Maybe I'll use this one here. So let's just get nice and closely zoomed in. Do that last. Don't forget uh, I've, uh, it's not till long till the end of the show. So if you're gonna set, if you want to win that twenty pound gift voucher, comment your favourite joke. Comment your favourite joke. Uh, so I've got ones to go through and choose because uh, we do have a lot of people who've sent in their jokes, but we want even more. So send us lots of jokes. Um, so I'm gonna just get my little crimp cover again. As you can see, same little horseshoe shape. I will lay my crimp on its edge so that it's sitting upright. Hopefully you can just see that it's kind of sitting up top there. I'll get my little crimp and drop it inside that cover. So if you can see, let's hopefully zoom in a bit. Just inside there is my crimp now inside my cover. So I'll bring in my pliers and just gently, not too hard in this instance, give it a squeeze to lock it in. See how it's now closed? You can still sort of just see it. At this point now, you want to just squeeze it downwards and work it into a ball shape. So just gently, gently squeeze and squeeze into a nice little circle shape until it's closed and into that beautiful little ball. There we go. Now look at that. Perfection. So you can see it's it's just like a small thin slit now and it just looks like a little ball. You'd never know. You'd never know that it's housing a crimp. So you just do that for all of your little pieces just there. And that completes your uh, your little bracelet. Um, and then you can see all of those little beads are now locked in place and it would be ready to wear as soon as you finish those crimp covers. Obviously, you don't have to do the crimp covers, but I think that they really add something special and nice. So these ones, by the way, for one last time, these are called bowls, which is B-O-L-S, almost like a bowl, but without the W. And then these ones here are called peacock beads, both of which come from the Czech Republic. Um, but yeah, that is essentially your um, how, how you use crimpable chain. Obviously, I'll, I'll just show you really quick another one I was going to do, but I've, I've gone on quite a bit too long. I've uh, I've done too much blabbering. Uh, but yeah, I was going to do one that was similar to that design um, that I had in my original picture, which is this one just here, which again, if you're doing a multiple strand bracelet, I'm not going to make it. I'll just show you the beads. Let's zoom out a little so we can see what I'm doing. Here we go. So with this particular one, what you would do, because it's a, uh, it's going to be a bracelet, I would have on my three strand bracelet, I've got three separate strands here, and I've made the other one so that it's only got one. Wait a second. So the plan would be that I would separate these two pieces to be just slightly wider than my central piece. Same over here. Separate them out just a little bit be a little bit wider than this gap and that essentially would make the 
the little, wait a minute, let's zoom out so we can see it. That would make that little bracelet pattern that was in that main image. You may have seen it as the cover photograph. For some reason, um, I, wait a minute, I'll see if I can find a picture of it. Wait a minute. That on the screen is essentially the pattern that you would need to create that design, which is, here we go. If I just pop this on screen, here we are. That would make this bracelet. So see how I've got them spaced so that they fill the gaps and everything? Um, that is how you could lay it out so that you'll get that effect of that bracelet in that image just there. I was going to make it, but again, as I said, I didn't quite give myself enough time. So I'll just tell you what the beads are. Um, don't forget, if you want the instructions for, for this crimpable chain, it's for free. So go on to our website and get the instructions for free. Um, they're available for free uh, for the next few days. So anyway, uh, I've got my my peacock stencil beads here, stencil peacock beads. That's a four mil silver round. And then I've got crimps just there, which I would use. I could either use a three mil crimp cover or a four mil crimp cover to to match i think i used a four mil crimp cover in this original uh whoops sorry wrong image yeah in the original image i used that particular one i used four mil crimp covers but i think maybe a three mil could look even nicer but yeah that will create this design here will create that bracelet um but yeah um just as a quick little rundown uh i'll see if i can find um don't forget i'll let you know if you want to be featured, it's too late for this week's, but I will get you featured at the beginning on Saturday because I usually do them on Saturdays. I don't do it as much on, on Wednesday tutorials, but the Saturday I, I sort of save them all up for, for the Saturday tutorials. Um, if you want to send us your pictures of what you've been doing or making or getting up to, doesn't have to be jewelry, can be other things as well. Any of the crafting you've been doing, um, so, oh, by the way, the findings bundles are on the website. If I've just been told they're currently out of stock, but Jermaine is just about to put the stock back up onto the website um, of our little uh, crimpable chain findings bundle. So if you wait about five minutes, the, uh, the findings bundles will be back um, in stock in about two minutes. So if you've just gone on and you can't find the findings bundle in gold or silver, it'll be there in two minutes time. Um, so yes, how, what did everybody think of the of the crimpable chain? It's it's great, isn't it? It's uh, it's quite quick and simple and easy to use, isn't it? Um, I'm I'm a big fan of crimpable chain, um, and then so I'll just show you um, as well some of those pictures uh, in a second that people have sent in to be part of today's show. Um, I'll just talk to you first about what I'm going to be doing next week. So like I uh, on Saturday, sorry. So like I said, I am going to be doing the um, Kumahimo, which is a Japanese braiding technique where you use this little disc. Uh, I'll do a whole technique on how to do it. Plus, I will give you the free pattern. The free pattern will be coming on how to uh, make your own Kumahimo disc so that you can do the braiding even if you don't have a Kumahimo disc at home already, we do have the um, we do have the little um, uh, template, I guess, on the website and available for uh, people to to have a go at uh, in advance if they want to. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to show you how to do it with beads. So like this particular one here with the crystals these few, see how it's got that sort of pearl and crystal spiral through it. I'm going to show you how to do that in the first part of the technique. Um, also, I will show you like in this seed bead one here, how to do it on all eight strands. So those are the two techniques I'm going to do. Uh, maybe even if I've, I'll see if I've got time, we'll see how long it takes, but maybe I'll even show you a quick technique video of how to do it without the beads, maybe, I guess, I guess I'll do it at the beginning. Um, and then I'll show you how to do it with the, with the beads 
uh, on four strands and how to do it on the beads with eight strands and then finally how to attach your findings all of that is going to be on saturday's video um, we've just had Susanna just join in. She loves the idea of crimpable chain. She's only just joined in. She's watching from the US. So she's going to watch the replay. So don't forget this video. You will be able to watch it on demand um, at as soon as this video is over. I'm going to put um, the on demand version onto the Bead Spider website. You'll be able to find a link to, by the way, I've just been told a link to Saturday's video um is going to be on the home page so if you want to get all the bits in advance for this saturday's video if you go to the home page of bead spider so if we have a little look just down here in the corner this is fun isn't it see www.beadspider.co.uk if you head to that website just down there in the corner right there at the very top of the home page you will find all of the products for making that Kumahimo jewelry plus um, that little Kumahimo disc free download to make your own disc will be on there um, as well. So definitely make sure you jump on there. Like I said, all of our tutorial videos are available on our website. So any of the videos that we've done in the past, um, I don't know, we've been doing them for years now, uh, but the live videos, all of those are in our video tutorial section uh, on the Bead Spider website. You can also access them from our YouTube channel. So definitely like and subscribe on Facebook and on YouTube so that you can access all of that and you'll be informed when we do new videos. So definitely um, have all of those on and ready. Um, I, I've got to remember, uh, I've also got everything prepared for next Wednesday, a week from today. Uh, what was it that we decided we would do? I can't remember. It's just left me at the top of my head. Jermaine's just put a comment in to remind, tell me to remind you all. But uh, I also have the page, the link for what's going to be next Saturday, which is a gemstone cuff, a gemstone cuff. We're doing a gemstone cuff bracelet next week. The, uh, the page is for that is also on the front page of our website. So like I said, beadspider.co.uk, head there and you'll find all the stuff for the Kumahimo that's coming up and for the video after that, which is our gemstone cuff. Um, ouch, I just bump, bumped my elbow. Um, but yeah, so I will just show you some of the pictures that people have sent in. So like I said, if you want to get featured live at beadspider.co.uk, send us your picture. Um, let's have a look at what some people have sent us um, already. So let's have a look. Here we are. Caroline from Devon, some of the products that she's been making. She looks like she's got some of those beautiful Czech stencil beads at the bottom, saying peacock beads at the bottom there. That looks like she's got some of those maybe in there. Um, she looks like she's done either square stitch or maybe on a loom, that bracelet. Uh, there's lots of beautiful things in there. Um, a nice pendant that she's done too. Um, oh, we've just had one second. I'll just put a link to the website in the comments section on both sides, just in case you want to access it. The link is in the comments on both Facebook and also on YouTube. Um, so, yes. Uh, now, don't forget, we also have here... Uh, Elaine from Nottingham. She sent us this picture the other day, but we wouldn't, we weren't quite sure of what it was. But she's made her uh, collider cycle here. No, I'm not so sure. Um, yes, her bowl and her lid. This is her picture of her bowl and her lid. So uh, that's a really, really cute, clever little piece that she's made there. I, I love that one. Um, hopefully, uh, you can all see that one. And one last one. Uh, we've got Jan from Belper in Derbyshire. She managed to finish her jazz piece there. Oh, what's going on? Uh, am I magically hiding in the background here for some reason? Oh, no. Uh, it's a reflection, I think, maybe. But, yeah, looks like she's made the, um, the jazz piece there. So maybe you can't quite see it. Uh, wait, let's see if I can just shift the image up a little. Here we go. 
there we go and you can see she's got that lovely pendant crystal pendant at the bottom there um then the other bracelet she's got the earrings everything in there so those are all the pieces of jewelry that she's made from her jazz jewelry set so thank you very very much um jan elaine and carolyn for sending in your photos but yeah don't forget one last time i'll just show you if you want to get featured on the show on saturday um definitely jump on to uh your email address and send us pictures doesn't have to be jewelry doesn't have to be it can be like what i've done of um of my mint or what you've been gardening and whatnot um all of those different things uh are um possible send them in too but yeah thank you all for sending in your jokes i might read some of those out i'll just see if i can find some that i haven't read yet uh there were quite a few um i mean they're all pretty terrible jokes but I, I i'm quite a fan of 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 a of a rubbish joke really what kind of music does a mountain like rock music so thank you to evelyn for that one there um let's see oh yes uh this one this one uh, I, I i very much like this one carolyn uh, claustrophobia is the fear of closed spaces. For example, I'm going to the bead shop and I'm very afraid that it's going to be closed. I like that joke. Um, but yeah, there's, there's quite a few funny ones. I'll, 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 uh, have to go through and I'll pick my favorite and I'll send that person a message or I'll reply to their comment. Um, and then I'll, uh, get back to you and I guess I'll let everyone else know on Saturday morning. Um, Camille says, thank you for the tutorial and have a good day. Thank you, uh, all of you for watching. I, I always appreciate having you join in with me on a Wednesday and a Saturday. So don't forget if you want to be informed when we're doing these videos, the best way to go about finding out when we do these videos is to have a look in the description and subscribe to the link where it says how to, um, uh, it says to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, I can't remember the exact text, what it says, but if you click on the second link there, uh, it'll take you to the subscription page for our newsletter, sign up for that. And then every time we're gonna do a live video, we send you an email uh, in advance and it will tell you when, uh, when we're gonna be going live when you can watch, how you can set yourself a little reminder. But don't forget, you can be watching on Facebook and on YouTube. So like, share, definitely, um, you know, let people know. Um, thank you all very, very much for joining in. Don't forget, I'm going to be doing Kumahimo. And then next Wednesday, a week from today, it's going to be, um, I'm going to be making a cuff with beautiful gemstones. So on the front page of our website, you'll find both uh, the materials for the Kumihimo and the gemstones. And then the link for today's tutorial stuff is um, up there in the description. And lastly, before I say goodbye, don't forget if you caught, if you missed my, my jazz jury tutorial, I made that one, uh, same as the, the photo that was sent in. Uh, I did that tutorial on um saturday just gone so you can go and access that again from the video tutorial section of the bead spider website or from facebook or youtube so thank you all very very much for joining in um carolyn says she'll be here on saturday so thank you carolyn for uh or caroline i'm not sure which uh for joining in um camille said thank you as well thanks camille um good night to kelly uh, but yeah, thank you all very, very much for watching and I will see you all next time. Uh, have a nice day or evening, wherever you are, uh, and I'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.